So on this year's AMC 12, you probably had a little bit of challenge in the beginning with several questions. Things like problem seven with the vector sum or problem eight with the log of the sine of three theta and several other problems that came after that in the early teens. One thing that you might want to start doing then maybe on the B test is start problem hunting. This was problem 19. And if you read the first two words, to me, it just leaps off the page probably Ptolemy's theorem. That's why it's a small notebook concept. I mean, that's like the key ingredient for when you can use it. So why don't we see what that looks like in this problem? Anything that you have an instant hunch on how to approach, try that problem before you start doing problems that have kind of concepts you're not as familiar with. Okay, let's get a look at this one. Cyclic quadrilateral ABCD has lengths BC equal to CD equal to three. So you know, how does that look? We don't really know. We got an angle of 120. Let's start with that. So some angle maybe, you know, approximately 90 is here. So maybe like here, there will be D and we'll call this C. Um, now, since it's cyclic, if that angle is 120, what do we know about opposite angles and cyclic quadrilaterals, right? Do you know the key facts about it? That's why that's a small notebook concept. That Ptolemy's is, so is opposite angles of a quadrilateral add up to 180 when it's cyclic, okay? So then you come over here and you say, all right, well, BC is equal to CD. So I'll put B and you don't quite know where to go or what that angle up there is or anything like that. And what would 60 look like? Um, this should be a little bit longer. It doesn't quite look like it's gonna look like 60 degrees. Uh, sometimes you're not gonna have something accurately drawn. Um, maybe I could probably do something like make it go out more. Let's do that. Yeah, I don't really care on I'm doing mine. I don't really care about the accuracy of it. Like I would rather um, just use a, uh, an idea that's conceptual so that this is 60 and we're saying this is equal to that, and those are both three, and that's five. Okay, something along these lines that you could use. Again, it doesn't really matter what it looks like down, almost looks parallel. Uh, that's not intended either. I'm trying to draw from the side, but whatever. We'll just work with this, okay? If you can work with something conceptually and you don't need the visual, it's actually a strength because then you don't have to redraw everything to be just right before you can do it. So let's go ahead and draw. We got A down here and let's see what it says. It says, uh, what is the length of the shorter diagonal of ABCD? So this CA is not going to be that shorter diagonal, okay? Um, the other one over here is B. You've got BD that going over that way. How are you going to find BD? Well, again, that's what Ptolemy's theorem talks about. Uh, am I pronouncing it right? I have no idea. Dude's not been alive for a while, so I hope he doesn't mind if I don't say his name right. I just assume it's said like that, never heard it pronounced. Uh, so then what? Um, Ptolemy's theorem says that the product of opposite sides, that would be three times five, only for cyclic quadrilaterals, three times five, the sums of the products of opposite sides, that's the proper way I want to say it, sums of products of opposite sides. So three over here times this unknown X value. This needs to equal the product of the diagonals. So we don't know what AC is, but we could say AC is Y and BD uh, will be Z, I guess. There you go, whatever. Diagonal one, diagonal two, who cares, okay? But that's the general idea. And because you're working with the diagonal right away and you've got what, two sides right here, you know, and 60 and 120. When you see angles like 60 and 120, you kind of have to go through like a read pattern, right? A quarterback, they have certain reads. This is my number one target. If that person's covered, I have a number two. If that person's covered, you're kind of like that on the test. You have to have certain reads when you're looking at things. If you don't see 60 and 120 and start thinking trig, I don't know, have you been through pre-cal or algebra two or learned these topics? You're taking the AMC 12. Those are common trig angles. It's got to leap off the page like, hey, if I need to, I can use trig. That should be like a, it's like a, a, a hot read, right? 120, hey, sine, cosine, tangent. We're good with all those things with 120. It's a unit circle value. 
Now 60, you get some additional thoughts. Maybe this is 90, maybe I get 30, 60, 90. You get those kinds of things that come up and that's fine. You should have those reads. But 120 doesn't have a whole lot. Other than if you have an isosceles with 120 and you drop the altitude, you get two 30, 60, 90s. So you see this and you're looking for this, hello, it's law of cosines. It should be your painting on the canvas of trig, right? So you gotta say, all right, well, what's the cosine of 120? It's the same as the negative cosine of 60. If you don't have your trig values memorized, watch my speed trig video. I'll link it in the description below. It's a way to quickly be able to recall. They're on your fingers, like all the trig values are, if you know how to do that trick. Now, if you're really, really trained and you're really going for a high score here, USAMO or better or what, whatnot, then you probably already know it and just have it memorized. Most of us do that, but if you kind of forget them pretty easily, it's a great video for people like you to be able to recall them in that moment. Okay, so uh, 120, you have cos of 120 is negative one half because the cosine of 60 is one half. So you're gonna say opposite side, I'm gonna call that y, I guess. y squared equals three squared plus five squared minus two times three times five times the cosine of 120, which is negative one half. So your negative, your negative cancel, your two and your half cancels, you get nine plus 25 plus 15. And that's all gone, yeah, plus 15. So you got 34 and 15, 49. If that wasn't a perfect square, and even if it, even if it wasn't, you still would keep going, but the fact that it is a perfect square, major sign this is the right path. This is uh, Hansel and Gretel's breadcrumbs and you're finding your way out of the witch's house. Uh, let's go over here and replace the Y with a seven now. And we know that this Y is a seven also. I'm just gonna put the seven here, okay? Now, all we need now is this X over here because you're not gonna be able to get BD yet. You need to get this X first. But think about it. If you get the X right here, you're done. That's your answer right there. Okay, so you just gotta rush for it now. Same exact concept be able to write out law of cosines at that same speed. Whatever angle you're using, it's the opposite side. Those are on opposite parts of the equal sign. So you're gonna say seven squared equals, uh, the other two sides that you use are the ones that sandwich the angle. They're the sides of the angle itself. So you're gonna say three squared plus X squared minus two times. To remember how to do this, it's this same one right here and that one just not squared. So it's pretty easy to generate this. Uh, again, this is opposite whatever angle you're using. So cosine of 60. So at this point now, you've got 49. I'm gonna take off nine from that and get 40 plus x squared, oh no, equals, equals, going too quick here. Uh, let's get rid of that. Equals x squared minus six x times the cosine of 60, which we just said was one half. So then you're going to have negative uh, 3x. So you have x squared minus 3x minus 40 equals zero. Everything that looks like this, a monic quadratic should be factored in, like, instantly. Like at the moment you look at it, it should just be factored, right? So it's just x minus eight, x plus five. If you're not good at factoring, go practice. Whatever they taught you in school, that big x method, uh, just that's nonsense. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll make a factoring video at some point. There's a lot better ways than that. It's kind of slow in my opinion and not great when the numbers are big. But x minus eight, x plus five, this is gonna equal zero. You get x equals eight. Obviously it can't be negative. So now you have another wonderful looking integer here, but more importantly, this is eight. And so what do you have? You have three times 13, you have 39. Factor out the three, five plus eight. So now you have 39 equals 7z, last step, divide by seven, win a prize. If I'm not talking to you, this whole problem based strictly on small notebook concepts and your instincts, you know, 120, do some trig, probably cosine. Law of cosines is great for finding sides. Why would I use law of sines if I knew another angle? If you have two angles, then you might consider it, yeah. Or if you were looking for this angle, I guess you might if you already had this side, okay? But law of cosines is a standard SAS and SSS are the two dominant times that you would use law of cosines. So whenever you see nice angles, any multiple of 45, any multiple of 30, 60, all those things, be thinking maybe I'm gonna use trig, okay?
So that's it. The whole problem can be done in a minute and a half, two minutes. I mean, it's, it's immediately upon thinking of Ptolemy's. Like these words, Ptolemy's. Maybe I can use Ptolemy's. Also knowing opposite angles add up to 180. That's like within 0.5 seconds of seeing the word cyclic quadrilateral, both thoughts should cross your mind. You want to train yourself to have those kinds of reactions to get a speed edge on people who don't think of those things. Furthermore, way easier than problem seven, way easier than problem eight. I say this all the time, stop expecting the questions in the order of difficulty. Okay, that's it for this one. Uh, see you in the next one.